How's it going guys? This is Nick from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson and today we're going to be taking a look at the Killian helmet from Harley-Davidson. So just like every helmet review on this channel, we're going to be taking a look at the design, the safety, the features, and the value of the helmet. So the first thing I want to break into is going to be the design of the helmet. And this is pretty straightforward, okay? Of course, you've got uh, the graphics that you can see here for each of the designs that Harley offers, which is really basically the same design, but you've got uh, white swapped with orange, uh, as you can see over here. And then in addition, uh, the last thing I want to cover with the design is going to be that this is a full face helmet. So helmets typically come in half shells, three quarter shells, full face, um, or uh, for example, modular helmets. This is going to be a full face. What that means is the chin bar is locking. Overall, it's gonna offer the most uh, safety of any of the possible helmet designs out there. Um, but of course, it does have some downsides. The modular helmet does allow for some easy access for drinking water at uh, gas stations, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for the utmost in safety, I would say that the full face design here is the pinnacle of what you can get. One of the other things I like to talk about when we're talking about the design is just gonna be the internal fit pattern. So having tried this on and having had Andrew try it on as well, I'd say that it leans a little bit more towards the round oval head shape. So really helmets are generally gonna be intermediate oval, which is gonna be a little bit longer front to back. Uh, you've got round oval, which is gonna be a little bit rounder. And then you've got a, a long oval, which is gonna be quite a bit longer front to back in terms of the internal fit scheme. Um, and obviously uh, what I'd highly recommend is going into your local dealership and if that's us, awesome, come on down, we'll help you get fitted uh, and try on the helmet and make sure that uh, not only does it fit your head measurement, just because you know every helmet's gonna come along with a measurement based upon the size for the circumference of your head, um, but to make sure that not only does it fit that, but it also fits the shape of your head. Uh, because one of the key factors when it comes to safety is just making sure that the helmet properly fits you. As I mentioned, I'd highly recommend coming in and trying on the helmet just because that's gonna be the best way to make sure there's no pressure points, that the head shape of the helmet is comfortable for you. So next up, let's go ahead and get into the features because one of the main reasons I wanted to take a look at this helmet was just I thought it offered a really uh, compelling feature set uh, at its price point. So this helmet is $135 retail. And for that, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. So first of all, uh, one of the cool features of this helmet is you're getting a drop-down visor. So uh, instead of having to carry around two face shields, one that's smoked and one that's going to be clear, just in case you get stuck at night, you're going to have a drop-down visor that's going to make it so that when it's dark, you can pop that down. And then when it's light, you can go ahead and pop it up. Uh, it's just really convenient. I'm the kind of guy that tends not to carry around the clear shield, so I get stuck riding around in the dark all the time with a mirrored shield, which really isn't safe. Um, so I try to avoid doing that. Another important feature that I think sometimes gets overlooked is just gonna be the venting scheme. So on less expensive hel helmets, it's typical to just have uh, either less venting holes or just less effective venting holes. Uh, on this helmet, we've got uh, two on the top of the helmet that actually do duct into internal channels that are cut in the EPS liner. That's gonna help flow air over the top of your head. At the back of the helmet, we've got an external vent that is passive, meaning unlike the top vents here, you can't open or close it. Um, but it's gonna really help create a, a vacuum out of the back of the helmet that's gonna take the front uh, cool air in over the head and extract it out the back. And then in addition, for both the purposes of getting air to uh, your lower face and to the visor to help avoid fogging, we've got a chin vent here. And this chin vent is of course going to, like I said, uh, vent air to both the face and it's gonna have the secondary effect of keeping the visor free from fog on colder mornings. So another aspect that's actually gonna help with the venting is the removable chin curtain on this helmet. So uh, this chin curtain right here can just be pulled out. It just is held in through Velcro. And when you remove it, it's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna let more air into the helmet, uh, which is gonna, of course, help with airflow overall and vice versa. So if it's cold and you wanna block out some of the air, you can put that in there. Uh, but in addition, keeping the air out of the helmet reduces wind noise pretty dramatically. So um, that's another reason that a lot of manufacturers are going to that. I like that this is removable. This is gonna be one of those contact points uh, with your skin. And anything that contacts your skin, you're gonna to wanna to clean regularly because getting the oil and dirt and dust and that kind of stuff, the contaminants out of uh, the helmet's uh, liner is gonna maintain that helmet liner for longer. So talking about that removable chin liner brings us nicely into the actual materials and the, the liner itself in the helmet. It's definitely an important feature to discuss. The helmet liner in this helmet is completely removable, which is really nice. You can pull out the uh, headliner and you can pull out the cheek pads. Uh, uh, the big benefit of that is that you're gonna be able to clean it more easily. Now, of course you can clean in there uh, with you know, water and whatnot. It's, gonna it's not gonna damage the EPS liner or the helmet, um, but 
really being able to pull those out makes the world of difference in getting a really effective clean on the cheek pads and the helmet liner. Uh, so I, I highly recommend obviously pulling that out uh, if you are going to clean the helmet. So touching on the fact that the liner is removable kind of brings us to the next point. Uh, this liner just as soon as I looked at it, as soon as I felt it, uh, it felt a lot more premium than I was expecting. So usually when you get a helmet at this price point, the liner is, you know, it's just uh, invisible basically. You don't really think about it. It's not very soft. Uh, it doesn't look very nice. It's not very plush. The cheek pads often aren't removable. Um, and this checks all those boxes in addition to being an antimicrobial fabric on top of that. So it's a liner that I would have expected in a helmet that is significantly more expensive than this. Um, and it oftentimes, even if you do get a helmet that's you know, twice the price of this helmet, you actually don't get those features. So I was really excited and happy to see that on this particular helmet. So this helmet is gonna be secured to your head with a uh, chin strap. It's a double D locking mechanism, which is gonna be the most common for the US market and gonna be the one that uh, US buyers are most familiar with. Uh, so nothing really surprising about that. I like to see it though, just because uh, it's what we're familiar with and it's a very safe locking mechanism. So next I wanna to touch on the safety of the helmet. So uh, no helmet is gonna be perfectly safe. And in fact, uh, various design choices often result in certain types of compromises. But uh, as I mentioned before, the full face is gonna be the safest helmet form overall that you can choose. So this is gonna be a very good option in terms of just the design of the helmet. You've got a, a strong chin bar and you've got full face protection that covers your entire head. Another safety feature that is often uh, overlooked at this price point is gonna be your removable cheek pads. So this actually has emergency cheek pad removal system where uh, if you reach underneath this leather flap here, uh, you'll be able to pull out a red strap and that lets you pull the uh, liner of the helmet out while you're wearing it. And the nice thing about that is that uh, instead of the uh, first responder having to kind of jimmy the helmet off your head and maybe tweak your neck when you already have a neck injury, which you don't want, um, they can slide the pads out and then just slide the helmet right off your head without causing any further tweaking of any potential neck or spine damage. So it's a nice safety feature that I don't often see at this price point. It's been trickling down from race helmets uh, into more uh, premium helmets uh, for the last few years, uh, but it's really nice to see it on a $135 helmet. So a big safety concern is gonna be the shell composition of a helmet. So this helmet is a polycarbonate shell, which is a great shell design for one, keeping costs down, which on a $135 helmet is just kind of a necessity if you wanna offer some other premium features other than just uh, a full face design. Um, but in addition, it's actually really good for low speed accidents. So polycarbonate shells tend to flex a little bit more. So in low speed kind of city uh, speed accidents, they're gonna be able to dissipate impacts over a larger area of the shell because of that additional flex. A step up from this would be a fiberglass shell, which is better suited to higher speed accidents. So it's one of those situations where you've got to pick the right helmet for the crash, but you never really get to pick the kind of crash that you have. So um, really it's a little bit of a trade off. And I think sometimes people put a little bit too much of an emphasis on shell composition when it comes to safety. But uh, the reality is that there's lots of very safe polycarbonate shells and lots of very safe fiberglass shells. The biggest advantage and the reason why you might extra want to pay extra for that polycarbonate or excuse me for that fiberglass shell over a polycarbonate shell is the fact that the fiberglass shell is going to be a fair bit lighter than the polycarb shell for a couple of reasons. One, fiberglass helmets tend to have multiple shell sizes just because they tend to be a more premium option, which this helmet appears to be to only have one shell size. I wasn't able to figure that out for sure, but this is a small and this is an XXL and I put them side by side and honestly they look to be basically the same size in terms of their external dimensions, meaning they're building different EPS liners and different interior liners uh, like cheap pads and helmet liners to fit smaller heads. Uh, the problem with that is twofold. One, this means that the small is gonna be about the same weight as the extra large. So if you're you know, uh, building a helmet that is fitting a smaller rider, you're not getting any of the benefit of having uh, to you know, protect a smaller head. You're still gonna be carrying around all that extra weight and the helmet's gonna look physically larger, which is gonna give you a little bit more of that bobble head look uh, than if you had had a smaller shell like uh, many fiberglass uh, shells will have. Now that's not because they're fiberglass shells, it's because uh, the helmet is usually more expensive and therefore the company can afford to make more shell sizes. Uh, another factor though is that just fiberglass is stronger uh, than polycarbonate is, meaning a polycarbonate shell just has to be thicker to offer the same amount of protection, which makes them heavier on average. So uh, that's a long way of saying that this helmet is going to be a fair bit heavier than more expensive helmets, um, but that's just really unfortunately the fact of the matter when you're 
entering that $135 price point, there's really not going to be a fiberglass uh, helmet out there at that price point, and certainly not one that offers the feature set of the Killian. Another safety feature that I wanted to touch on that I thought was a really nice touch, and I see on a lot of Harley's helmets that doesn't get talked about very often and doesn't always replicate it, is this reflective liner right here. So uh, what this material does is when light is shining directly at it, it bounces light back at that, meaning anyone who's shining a headlight in your direction is going to see this on the bottom of your head, which is nice and high up on the bike. A lot of the lights that we have on our bikes are going to be you know, pretty low down because even the tail section of your bike, which is going to be one of the higher portions of your bike, depending on the style of bike that you have, is really not anywhere near as high as your head. So this is going to get you more visible up high without having to choose a super bright color helmet. You know, obviously a lot of us like the looks of a black helmet, but then you're sacrificing some visibility. Having some of that reflective material means that at night you're going to be even more visible than a white helmet because it's going to reflect light directly back at uh, whoever's shining the light at you. So it's just going to keep you visible and going to keep you safe. So finally, that brings us into a discussion of value. And uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, because of all the features that this helmet has, the quality of the liner, uh, the fit and finish overall of the helmet, which I didn't really touch on, but the fact that the clear coat is over all these graphics, these aren't just stickers that are just applied to the exterior of the helmet. It's really built and constructed in a way that when I picked up the helmet, I was seriously expecting a $300 price point. Um, other than the fact that it was a little bit heavier than maybe a helmet at $300 would typically be, I had absolutely no clue it was going to be sub $300. When it ended up being less than half of that, I was thoroughly, thoroughly surprised. Uh, you've got contrast stitching on the leather around the neck roll of the helmet. The liner is plush and soft and removable. You've got a drop down visor. You've got good ventilation. Uh, you've got just a lot of features on this helmet that just typically aren't available on helmets at this price point. So I was thoroughly impressed and I think it offers a huge amount of bang for your buck. There are nicer helmets on the market, but at $135, I think you'd be really hard pressed to actually find one even remotely competitive with this. I think it'd be a lot easier to find a $300 helmet that actually isn't nearly as nice as this helmet. So I was thoroughly impressed. I would highly recommend checking one of these out. The only concern as is always a concern with any helmet, is to make sure that it fits your, your specific head properly. So get into your local dealer, try one on, come on down to Laidlaw's, we'll fit you for the helmet. If we don't have the right size in stock, we're gonna be happy to order it for you. But that's gonna be a key component of making the helmet both comfortable and safe, is making sure that it fits you properly. So come on down, try it on, and I think you'll be impressed. So one side note is if you are ordering online, a lot of the reviews do say that the helmet by most people's standards, runs a little bit small. So uh, if you are ordering from a place that has no return policy, then I would potentially recommend ordering a size up, but I hesitate to do that because as I mentioned before, I'm just a strong believer in trying on a helmet before you buy it. I just, I personally wouldn't buy one that I wasn't able to try on or at least return. So uh, just keep that in mind that uh, the reviews on Harley's website do suggest that it runs a little bit small. And I, I tried on a small, which would be my normal head size, and it did feel quite small to me as well. So uh, I would buy a medium, which is one size up from where I would typically be based upon the measurements that they provide. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, that quick look at the Killian helmet. I uh, really do think it's a strong value. If you're looking for a full face helmet and you wanna keep your, uh, your price point pretty reasonable, but you don't wanna sacrifice on quality or fit and finish or features, uh, I, I mean, honestly, this is, it's, it's hard not to recommend this helmet uh, for 135 bucks. So uh, it's a pretty amazing value. The only reason I wouldn't go with something like this is if you're really demanded having the lightest helmet, you know, and at that point, I would say step up to some, you know, fiberglass alternative. So that's it for, uh, for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any questions you have down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. And as I mentioned, come on down, try on the helmet, and uh, we'll get you fitted. All right, see you on the next one.